Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to project video content inside of a Blender scene to get this cool screen effect. It's actually a very simple effect to achieve because if you didn't know already, the image texture node in a shader editor can load in videos as well as images. So I'm going to show you my favorite setup for how to do this, especially for artworks like I've got on the screen here. What this effect will allow you to do is to take any object in the scene and without even necessarily having UV mapped the object, it will let you project the video content over the top of it, which I think is cool for any kinds of like generative artworks or even with the cycles rendering engine, you can use the emission values from this to project lighting onto any object in the scene. So strictly speaking, you could use video content not only as a creative background, but also as a lighting source onto other objects. So before I show you the nodes, I'm just going to explain this back wall screen here. I don't know what to call it. I don't know whether to call it like an LED screen or something, but it's just a bunch of light blocks. And these are just cubes with some extra detailed meshes around them. Then I have one material, the same material applied to every single one of these cubes, which is seen down here. And I'm going to delete all of this and show you it from the ground up. So like I said, if you're new to Blender, the image texture node can take in images and video files that you can import from outside. Just to show you this, I can press open and choose my pattern cross image and then plug the color into the surface input of the material output node. And you're not going to see anything to start with, but if I rotate one of these cubes, you can see that it is trying to map this image around the cube. Mapping is the key point of this tutorial because we want to be able to get the effect going across all of the objects in the scene without having to UV map them manually and that should give us a lot of free control over the artistic style of the scene. So typically if you did want to take an image like that and wrap it around a shape like this you'd need to play around with the coordinates. So in a similar way to my last tutorial about light nodes which I recommend you watch we can create a texture coordinate node so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to plug the object vector into the vector input of the image. Now we can see that the mapping is not right because that pattern is being stretched down the shape. But this is where the mapping node comes in handy because if I put that down here and then rotate the uh, X axis, you can see that the pattern is now starting to appear properly. And it's a repeating pattern. And the reason it's repeating is because we've got repeat here in the uh, image texture node. So I can change that to anything else and we'll get a different result. But I'm going to leave it on repeat. Now already this by itself you can see is just a pretty cool technique because we could create any basic image pattern we like and get a cool effect. But but that's not what this tutorial is about. We're going to take a look at video content. So I'm going to press the open image button here again, but this time I have a video file. And for me, it's wormhole underscore L dot MP4. Now this is the actual video result from my last tutorial about light nodes. So I'm going to bring that in. And one thing we can immediately see is that it's being tiled way more than it should be. But before we sort out the tiling, we're going to talk about how to actually play the video in the scene. Because if I play the timeline here, you can see that nothing's really playing. There's a couple of things we need to do. First of all, we need to tell this image text node how many frames there are in this video file. And you'll notice that since we've selected a video file, there are some extra parameters here now. We can see it set the source drop down here to movie, which is what we want. But then there's frames, start frame and offset. Now, thankfully, I actually know how many frames are in this video file, but if you don't know how many frames there are, then you can just set it to any number you like. So I'm going to set it to 360, which is the actual frame count for the video. And then I'm going to tick auto refresh down here, which is going to update the image on a frame change. So you can see that as I scroll through the timeline now, the video is playing. So if I play that back, we can watch it happening in real time. Okay, so what about the mapping to fix this tiling? This is where it's really going to depend on the layout of your scene, the aspect ratio of your video and the kind of objects that you want to project the image onto. But just to give you the basics, if something's tiling this much, we know that we've got the scale wrong, even though we've got the angle right, because we can actually see flat on that the video is playing here. So we need to adjust the scale and possibly the rotation just to get it looking right across these objects. So if I come down here and play with the scale, I can turn down the uh, X. I'm going to hold shift while I'm scrubbing this just to do it slower you can see it's now stretching the video out. And that's kind of what we want to do. We want to stretch it out that way and also in the other direction. So let's try Y. Okay, scaling on the Y isn't correct because instead of scaling it, it's just scrubbing it along. So it means that Z is going to be the other one we want to scale. But then we can see that we've got this harsh line going down the middle. This is basically like this the side of the video, which we don't want. So if we move the location, we can move the video along. So you can see what's happening here. We're trying to rescale and recenter the image so it looks more appropriate across all of the objects. So I'm going to scale this down a lot more. I'm going to put this to 0.1 and 0.1 for the Z. Okay, but we have a bit of a problem. Even though we can see kind of more of the video, it's the same image being repeated for every single object we have here, which is not what we want because we want to have the video being projected across all of the objects at once. Now, there are a few ways you can do this, again, using a different vector source. One of them would be to take the camera input as a vector. Uh, but as you can see, there's a bit of a weird effect going on where as we're moving the camera, the video file is moving with it, which is not what we want. A similar thing happens with the window as well. It's a lot more stretched out, so it's a bit difficult for you to see. Might be a bit difficult on the uh, video. But again, like as we're kind of moving the camera, the video file is shifting. 
What we actually want to do is keep it on object, but the thing is using this object input just takes it for every object that the material is applied to. What we need to do is give it a different object reference. So every time this material is used, it's going to use the coordinate input from a separate object. So each of these objects is going to use the same input from a different object. And to do that, we're going to use an empty. So I'm going to press shift A to create an empty uh, arrow. I can do a single arrow, but I've already made one in preparation for this. I've called it the screen target and the name is quite important. So I've got an empty object here and it's pointing backwards. The location, scale and rotation of this empty object are all quite important and I can demonstrate why in a second. So if I click back on this material, in this object reference field I'm going to click on it and type in screen target which is the name of my empty object and then all of a sudden we can see okay well the, the result has changed here. Suddenly it's being stretched across these objects horizontally. It's not quite right but it does mean that we're getting the video projected across multiple objects at once. So again we just need to make some adjustments to this mapping to get it right. So in this case the values are different. The y is is actually what we want to use to do this scaling here. So let me just reset the Z because that's not going to do anything for us. I'm going to do 0 0.1, 0 0.1 for the X and Y. So now that's stretching it out into more of a square like we want. And I'm going to set the locations of X and Y to 0.5. And that's going to give us roughly what we want. Now to make this easier to see on the back here, I'm going to actually make a principal DSDF shader and pass the color through that. But instead of putting the color through the base color value, I'm going to pass the color through the emission value. What this is going to do is keep things unlit, so it's going to be unaffected by light because it's its own light source. But if we were using the cycles rendering engine, this also means that this will now emit light onto other objects. But to prepare this material to display this properly, we need to turn the base color all the way down. And then we can also play with other values like turning the metallic up on the specular down and you have your own choice of how you want to set these values. But I'm just going to set them like this. We can then increase the emission strength to control how powerful the light source is for these screens. So I'm going to set it to something like 10. And again, just to make it easier to watch this video file changing over time, I'm going to make a brightness and contrast node and then slightly increase the contrast of the effect so we can see how it changes here. OK, so that's good. So we now have the texture coordinates passing from a empty reference to the mapping. Using the mapping, we have adjusted how we want that video file to be projected across the images. That vector is being passed into the image texture node, which actually has a video. So the name image texture node is a bit misleading. And now we're passing that color data down to an emission input of a principal BSDF shader, which is going to the material output. OK, so it's time for the extra note about the empty control. So if you have the empty selected, you'll notice that if you rotate it, we are kind of adjusting the mapping using just this object. So by moving its location, we're moving the equivalent of the location value for the vector by changing the rotation, the same thing, and then for S for the scale, doing the scale as well. So if you wanted some extra artistic control over the scene for how it should look, you can even maybe animate this object if you wanted, then you can do that. So I just think it's a handy tool for pinpointing exactly how you want the file to be projected inside of the scene. So this now means that whatever objects we put in and add this material to, it's going to project that video file. So you can see that as I move this sphere around, the video is being projected onto it. And one of the important things about not using the uh, camera as the vector input, which would otherwise be fine, perfectly fine for like a still image because you'd just be projecting out from where the camera is looking. The good thing about not using this is that we can now animate the camera and have it move while the result stays accurate on the back screen. So we can do this nice pan into this character as the video is changing on the screens in the background. I should also say this demo file will be available in my Gumroad for $1 as well, so you can go and pick that up if you want to dissect it and take a look. Okay, well because I've been mentioning cycles, I should actually give you a demonstration for that. I'm going to go and unplug the volume that I've got going on. I'm going to move the character back towards the screen a bit more, and maybe even turn up the lighting. And you can see that the light is now affecting the character. So if you want to get creative with any kind of like motion graphics or studio lighting, visualization, whatever you want to do, then this is a cool technique for having things change and having the lighting that's created by that change affect the character in different ways. Because as the color is going to change behind the character, then the lighting is going to change. So I think that's just a cool little technique. OK, so that's how you do the videos. But of course, you can get creative with the regular images as well. So if I bring in that pattern cross again, plug in the vector we've created, and make this new pattern the emission input. So you can see we've got this red X going across, so I can increase the emission. There you go. So combining you know, this object with this interesting topology going on with these patterns, we didn't have to do any of this color inside of Blender. I think this is like a pretty cool piece of artwork as it is. 
Okay, so let me just reset all this. One more thing before I close this up is we're going to talk about UV coordinates. So you may not know, but in the visual effects industry, they're using these cool kind of LED screens around actors now instead of green screens to get accurate lighting from a virtual environment onto them. Well, I think that has like a really cool look to it. And though you could use an HDRI or anything you like to light a character in a virtual 3D scene, I like the idea of projecting a video file across a curved background because something about the meta nature of having the screen there in the virtual space just feels pretty cool. So I can show you quickly how to do that. So one thing you might not know is that any primitive you make already kind of has UV coordinates assigned to it. So if we add a plane here, and then I'm going to rotate that by 90 degrees on the X axis and give that the screen material, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore the vectors that we've created so far. I'm actually going to make a duplicate of this material and call it screen underscore two. So we want to get rid of that vector and just have the uh, video file plugging straight into the shader. What you'll see is that the movie is already playing on it. So we don't need to add any extra vector or coordinate information whatsoever. It's because this plane as a primitive is already given UV data. It's very basic because it's a square, just zero to one. When you're looking at the UV image editor, you can visualize this. So maybe if I open this up now, go to the UV editor, this plane here is essentially just exactly what that square is. So if I open the wormhole video file here in the image editor, you can imagine that video is just being squashed down into the square. That's what we're seeing on the plane. But how can we make a nice curved background from this? If I go into the uh, workbench mode here, grab an edge. There are like a thousand ways you can do this, but I'm just going to do it this way. So I pu push the edge back, press control B to bevel it, and you can scroll forward and backwards to get different amounts. Once I've got that, I'm going to go into object mode and then shade smooth it then bring it behind the character a bit, scale it up now. Like, as I said, that's gonna play as it is. Uh, because it, we've kind of stretched out in one direction, the, um, the video file is gonna stretch as well. So we can always stop this and stretch this out sideways a bit more. So we've got a cool effect going, and of course the aspect ratio of your video is going to determine how the video is gonna look on a surface like this. But like I said as well, in Cycles, we're gonna get that light that's coming out of the emission value from that shader projected onto the character. So if you wanted to do some cool motion graphics where a character has like a funky abstract video type background going behind it with that light approaching onto the character, this is a cool way that you could do it. But this way you are limited in the fact that if you had other objects you wanted to put the video file on, you can't really project it on because it's just using the UV data. However, from this angle, because this is all very front on from the camera, you could just as well use the camera vector input and then adjust the mapping and that would still look okay. So I've just plugged the camera input into the mapping and then the mapping into the image texture node and adjust this for the camera view and you can see that it's just projecting the video one from there. So that would also work fine. So again, one more thing before we close this up is that because we have the video file coming through nodes, we have a lot of control over how we want the style to look. So for example, I could like add a hue saturation node, push that in here. And then again, we can like change the values of this, maybe add some extra saturation. So if you want to get creative with the visual styling, then you can do that very easily. So yeah, I'm just going to quickly try and make a piece of art while we're doing the outro. So thanks for watching everyone. Hopefully you've enjoyed this technique and feel free to show me if you make any cool results with it. Feel free to sign up to our Discord if you want to share your work and get sneak previews of upcoming videos. You can also take part in art challenges on there as well, which are quite fun. We do them like every couple of weeks or something. And the results of those art challenges get put on my website as well, so you can have a permanent spot on the website if you want to take part in that. Uh, feel free to also sign up to my Patreon where you can get notified of new videos and content. And I do a monthly content report at the end of every month. And that will also mean that you can get your name put at the end of uh, videos as well. And you'll see that in the outro. So thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this. Again, feel free to show me if you make anything cool with it. This is our piece of artwork for the end. And I will see you next time.